present Arthur Lowe, John LeMessurier, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> the Battle of Godfrey's Cottage, featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley, and Ian Lavender, with this week's guests, Bill Pertwee, Nan Brompton, and Percy Edwards. <laughs> Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. It is now the summer of 1940. And with the possible threat of a German invasion becoming stronger every day, Home Guard units are on special alert. At Warmington-on-Sea, Captain Mannering has taken over the Novelty Rock Emporium on the seafront and intends to use it as a forward command post. This evening, he is busy putting the final touches to a diagram on the blackboard. Ah, that should do. Good evening, sir. Oh, hello, sir. Well, you're early, sir, aren't you? Yes, yes, I wanted to finish this new battle plan. <coughs> Indigestion, sir? Oh, just a touch of flatulence, yes, I had to rather rush my meal this evening. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. In, Mr. Manred. In, Mr. Wilson. Hello, Jones. Good. Evening, Corporal. Oh. Mm. You all right, Mr. Manred? Oh, yes, thank you, dear. Just a, a little wind. Uh, I've got the very thing for that, sir. Try some of this. What is it, Jones? Bicarbonate of soda, sir. Nothing like it. I always carry it with me, you know. Really? Yes, sir. I got the habit when I was in the Sudan. General Kitchener was very keen on it, you know. Boys used to say, he always called us that. <laughs> <laughs> always keep your bayonet sharpened and your bicarbonate of soda ready. <laughs> and then you won't get the wind up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he had a very dry, subtile sense of humour, you know, sir. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, he must have him. That was... <laughs> 45 years ago, sir, and I always carried this bottle of bicarbonate with me ever since. Have you really? Of course, it's not the same lot, you know. No, no. Well, <laughs> it's very kind of you, Jones, but uh, I think I'll be all right now. Yes, sir. Well, if you want it, sir, you just let me know. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, Captain Mannering. Come in, Godfrey, Fraser. Hi, Find hi. room at the back somewhere. Thank you. Now, it's going to be a little crowded with the whole platoon in the small shop, but it is only for this evening. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, don't you think you ought to remove that shop bell? It's a, it's a bit of a nuisance. A bit of a nuisance? Yes. Where's your imagination, Wilson? It'll stop the enemy from taking us by surprise. Oh. <laughs> I, I never thought of that. Mm. <laughs> Not late, am I, Mr. Manry? No, no, you're all right, Pike. I haven't started yet. Oh, good. Now, just put your bike outside with the others, boy. There's no room for it in here. I help me laugh, sir. Oh, what is it, Pike? Oh, Mum's not going to like me leaving my bike in the street, you know. I might get pinched. Just do as you're told, Pike. Tell Mum about this, Uncle Arthur. <laughs> Wilson. Yes, sir. I wish you'd stop young Pike calling you Uncle Arthur. <laughs> it's very bad for discipline, you know. I'm almost sorry, sir, it's, but it's really not my fault. You see, when he was a little boy, he used to call me something else, you see, and... Uh, <laughs> Mavis, I mean, uh, Mrs., uh, Mrs. Pike, I told him to call me Uncle to stop him uh, 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 calling me something else, you see. <laughs> what did he used to call him? Daddy. What? <laughs> I mean, I mean, Daddy. D A W D Y. Daddy. Daddy? Daddy, yes. <laughs> but uh, please, uh, please, don't go on. Well, not really his daddy, his father, are you? Well, uh, oh, no, certainly not, sir. No. <laughs> well, have a word with Mrs. Pike and see if she can encourage him to call you Sergeant instead. At least until the war's over. All right, sir. Right, sir. Right. <laughs> now, Anne, can I have your attention, please? Yes, sir. Yes. I've asked you to parade here tonight at the Novelty Rock Emporium because, in the event of an invasion, this shop will be our command post. Our nerve centre as well. Hey, you. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Who's in charge here? Well, Captain Mannering over there. What is it, Wilson? Well, it's this man, sir. He, he's asking who's in charge. I told him you were. Quite right, Wilson. Who are you, anyway? Oh, Jesus, my name. And I'm the ARP warden for this section. And I want to know what all those bicycles are doing outside. They belong to members of my platoon. I don't care who they belong to. Get them shifted. I don't think I like your tone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't you? Well, I'll try it in a different tone. Shifting! <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Don't you think you're rather exceeding your authority? <coughs> Section 4, paragraph 2 of the Defence of the Realm Act states no vehicles or any other means of transport will be left unattended in a usable condition. Don't you realise those bicycles could be used by enemy parachute troops? Well, I, I, <coughs> I'm well aware of the situation. I shall take steps to see that it is attended to. You'd better, mate. Otherwise, I shall let your tyres down. <laughs> I'm barely thinking of my tyres. <laughs> and now leave my shop. I'll leave my command post at once. I'm going. But don't say I haven't warned you. Now, man, as I was saying, 
In the event of an invasion, this is the plan. As soon as you hear the church bells, you will proceed at once to the novelty rock emporium, which is marked here on this diagram I've drawn. You won't see that. Oh, oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Now, in the event of an aforesaid emergency, you would, on arrival here, be split into two sections. I shall take one half, some will take the other. The first section will then move off to the crossroads here, one mile away. Now, this is a vital strategic position. He who holds the crossroads holds Warmington on sea. <laughs> now, we need to establish a machine gun post. And I think the ideal place would be Godfrey's Cottage. Here. You don't mind, you, Godwin? Uh, mind what, sir? <laughs> Haven't you been listening? Oh, I, I'm sorry, sir. I was asking if we could use your cottage as a machine gun post. You live with your sister, don't you? Oh, that's right, sir. The trouble is she's getting a little uh, vague with the advancing years. And mm. If she was in bed when the invasion came and she'd taken one of her tablets, she may, might not be able to let us in. <laughs> You've got a key, haven't you? Well, no, sir. You see, there's only one and she's got it. <laughs> Mr. Speaks up? Yes. Why does Miss Godfrey leave the key under a flower pot? <laughs> ah, yes. An excellent idea, John. Suppose you've got a flower pot, Godfrey? Oh, yes, sir. My sister's very keen on flowers, Mr. Manry. It's her hobby. Good, good. Well, that's that, then. And we have flower pots all along the front of the cottage. Yes, yeah, I see. Mr. Speaker? Yes, sir. It won't be easy to find the key if there are lots of flower pots. <laughs> no, that's quite right, Joan. Yes. Can I suggest we use our noses, sir? Noses? Yes, sir. You see, all Mr. Godfrey has to do is to leave the key under a pot with a special flower in it. I see. Yeah, remember this is at night, Jones. Yeah, I know that, sir. We'll use night-scented stock. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yes! That's an excellent idea, Jones. See to that, Godfrey. Right, you are, Mr. Manley. There's just one thing, sir. Do we all know what this flower smells like? No. No, 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 that's the point. I tell you what. Godfrey, you bring some with you on parade tomorrow, and every night we'll have a practice sniff. <laughs> You haven't forgotten you're going to the pictures tonight, have you, Wilson? The pictures, sir? Yes, over at Eastgate. You know, the special showing for home guard units of the film Next of Kid. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Of course, I had forgotten to remember. Uh, will you be going, sir? No, no, I... I've got a lot of paperwork to catch up with down at the church hall. In fact, I think I'll go now and leave you to lock up. All right, very good, sir. Oh, look here, Wilson. Mm -hmm. Miss King has obviously overlooked this letter. She asked me to sign it, and it really ought to go off tonight. See if you can catch her, will you? Yes, of course, sir. Yes. So I'd better put this bead box back downstairs in the vault. <coughs> oh! Thank goodness it's dark on these stairs. Really quite dangerous. I was mentioning that to Wilson. Ah, <coughs> now, what's the combination? Five, four, two, eight, six. No, no, no. No, wait a minute. That's Elizabeth's mother's telephone number. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. seven eight four six seven. Good oh, heavens! Right. <laughs> now let's see. Where did this box come from? All right, sir. I caught up with Miss King. Uh, Mr. Ma Mr. Manry, sir. sir? Funny. I forgot. Uh, Pike. Yes, Mr. Wilson. Did you see Mr. Mannering leave? No, Mr. Wilson. Perhaps he went out the back door. Yes, that must be it. Yes. The rest of the staff have gone as well. Call me for anything else. No, it's all right, Pike. No. But uh, don't forget the coach leaves in 15 minutes. Yeah. I can't understand why they're taking us all to the pictures. Uh, tonight. GHQ, you see, want all units to see the film. It deals with the effects of careless talk. Who's in it then? They wouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? What's that noise? Who's the church bells? Funny time of day to ring a minute. Oh, perhaps someone's getting married. <laughs> Good gracious, it, it, it's the invasion signal. Well, Uncle Arthur, what are we, we going to do? Well, you can stop calling me Uncle Arthur for a start. We'd, we'd better get down to the Novelty Rock Emporium. But the coach is waiting to take us to the pictures. Well, we just have to go another night, that's all. Now, get your rifle and gas mask. Come on, right. and, 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 and I'll lock up. <laughs> Terribly dusty down in the vault, Wilson. You know, I think we ought to have more... Wilson? That's funny. Wilson? 
Hmm. He didn't waste much time. Must have thought I'd gone. Getting to be a bit of a clock watcher, that man. I have a word with him about that in the morning. Well, I suppose I might as well get off to the church hall. Come on, Jonesy. Keep up, man. We've got to get down to the Noble Rock Emporium. I'm pending as hard as I can, Jock. Well, you're not going very fast, are you? Those church bells were going to signify an invasion, not a funeral. <laughs> if I go any faster, my chain will fall off. <laughs> if you go any slower, you'll fall off. <laughs> hey, Jock, hang on a minute. What is it now? Don't tell me your bell's broken. Oh, stop a second. What? Look outside the church hall. Isn't that Mr. Manwin's bike? Aye, man, I think you're right. Why isn't he down at the Novelty Rock Emporium? I don't know, Jock. Come on, let's find out. Mr. Manwin! Mr. Manwin! Mr. Manwin, what are you doing here at the church hall? I'm writing a home guard lecture. Why, what's the matter? There he is, sir. Who's here? The Jerry, sir, the Jerry, sir. <laughs> Faze and me were just on our way over to the Novelty Rock Emporium. Oh, no. We just happened to see a bike outside as we're passing. Come on, sir, there's no moment to lose. What are you talking about, Fraser? The Jerry! Bells, sir, they've been ringing. Well, I heard nothing. When was this? Come on, but 20 minutes ago. I was at home having tea, so I went straight round to collect Jones at his house, and we're just not waiting for the command post, sir. But this is terrible. The coach will be halfway to Eastgate by now. Huh? We've been waiting for six months for this moment. And now Hitler's at our throats, and my platoon's gone to the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, why, why weren't you there? Well, it's coupons, sir. I was counting my coupons. And I was sir. going to get on my stock ticket, sir. What are we going to do, Mr. Manrin? Just a minute. Let me think. Listen, it's going to be a bit difficult to defend the novelty rock emporium with just three men, you know, sir. You're right, Peter. I think we shall have to accept the fact that we three couldn't stop them landing. <laughs> we'll have to change our plans. Commander of the field must always be flexible, make snap decisions. Well, don't take too long over it, sir. If it is, sir. <laughs> the crossroads. That's the key position. Three determined men could hold up an army there. Now, if we could hold out long enough, our regulars will have enough time to regroup for a counterattack. Might be the end of us, of course, but we're prepared for that, aren't we? Yes, sir. <laughs> right. I'll take the Lewis gun. You two will grab a magazine each. I don't think we're going to have much idea. time for reading, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Manling means these, you old fool. Ammunition. <laughs> Come on, you two. At the double to Godfrey's cottage. <laughs> Aren't you parading with the yeomanry tonight, Joe? No, dear, I have to go down to the clinic. Well, I'm sure you've got time for another cup of tea and one of my upside-down cakes. Oh, I should think so, Sissy. Oh, you greedy little parrot, you. Do you want a little bit of Mummy's upside-down cake? Oh, you are, then. Ah, you silly old faggot. <laughs> Not maggots. It's one of Mummy's upside down cakes. <laughs> you finish your tea, Charles, dear. I'll see who it is. All right. I'm coming. Good evening, Miss Godfrey. Oh, Mr. Mannering. Charles, dear, is that nice bank manager, Mr. Mannering. And he's got a big gun with him. Oh. <laughs> Do come in, sir. Hello, oh, Hello, Mr. Fraser. Uh, Mr. Jones. Hello. Uh, what are you doing here, Godfrey? I thought you'd gone into Eastgate with the rest of the platoon. No, it's, it's my knife at the clinic, sir. Oh, well, that makes one more of us anyhow, sir. Well, hurry up and get your rifle and steel helmet, Godfrey. The, the invasion's on. What invasion, sir? The Germans, of course. <laughs> Didn't you hear the church bell? No, sir, I'm, I'm afraid not. Oh, well, there's no time to go into all that now. We're setting up our command post here. You did tell your sister, didn't you? I'm afraid it slipped my mind, sir. Oh. Well, it's too late now. Jones, give me a hand with him. We'll sit the Lewis gun up at this window. Right, Mr. Excuse me, Miss Godfrey. Why, what have you done? Ah. <laughs> no, 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 you don't understand. I, I want to put this Lewis gun there and, and you're in the way. Oh, I'm so sorry. Would it be all right if I sit on the sofa? Yes, by all means. Okay. Come on, Jones. Rest the gun on here. Uh, Mr. Mannering. What is he, Godfrey? That desk is genuine regency. Would you mind putting this little doily underneath the gun? <laughs> really, Godfrey. We're at war, not at Sotheby's. <laughs> the memory of what we really need at this window is some sandbags. Yes, you're right, Jones. Uh, what about cushions and pillows, sir? Uh, if we could jam them round the window, they'd give us some sort of protection. That's a good idea, Fraser. Yes, get as many as you can. I will, sir. Come on, Godfrey, lend a hand. Uh, come in, Mr. Barrett. I just put in my steel helmet on. 
Uh, uh, excuse me, Miss Godfrey. Would you like a cup of tea, Mr. Jones? Not just now, thank you, Miss Godfrey. You see, the Germans are coming. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, so many people coming for tea. <laughs> I think I'd better make some more. Here you are, Captain Mannering. I found these pillows upstairs. Ah, oh, well done, Fraser. Help me to stack them up round the window, right, sir. Here's another cushion, sir. Thank you, Jones. Yeah. Wait a minute. What is it, sir? What are you doing in your boat, sir? Where's your helmet? Well, I'm sorry. I come straight from my shop. In all this confusion, I forgot. You must have a steel helmet, man. Uh, oh, wait a minute, Mr. Mannering. I've got an idea. What is it, Godfrey? Mr. Jones could wear this. Well, thank you, Godfrey. I don't think putting a flower pot on his head is going to help. Sir. <laughs> it's not really a flower pot, sir. It's an old German steel helmet. I brought it back from France in 1918 as a souvenir. Oh, well, I suppose it's better than nothing. I'll just get rid of the flowers. Oh, oh dear. Sorry about your geraniums, Godfrey, but this is war. <laughs> Come on, Jones. Oh, thank you, Mr. Menwin. Oh, it's really quite comfortable. <laughs> Do you think the Germans will lie low until it gets dark, Captain? Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Would you? Typical Nazi trick. <laughs> well, whoa, whoa. What is it, Jones? Whoa. I've got a cold, wiggly feeling down my spine. <laughs> oh, pull yourself together, Jones. You've been in action before? Yes, but I never had a cold, wiggly feeling down my spine like this before. <laughs> Come here, man. Stand still a minute. Here, yeah, Mr. Fraser, what are you doing? I'm going to have a look down the back of your shirt. Ah, I thought as much. What do you mean? What do you mean? What is it? It's the sort of thing you have to expect if you will wear a flower put in your head. What? 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 You've got a worm down there. <laughs> get it out! Get it out! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm class, sir. Yes, Frank. What is it? Why do you think Mr. Mannering isn't here? I've really no idea. Well, he ought to know where to go. It was him who told us to come to the Novelty Rock Emporium if we heard the church bells ring. Mm. What are you thinking about? I don't like it, Frank. It's too quiet. <laughs> That's funny. Mm? That's what the sergeant always says in those Western films. Is it really? Yes. <laughs> you remember, the cavalry patrol comes trotting along. Yeah. Then they stop and the officer looks round through his field glasses. Mm. And then the sergeant says, I don't like it, sir. It's too quiet. I see. Well, then what happens? He gets a big arrow right in his chest. Right. <laughs> Is he really? Of course, sometimes, Uncle Arthur, it's the officer who says it's too quiet. Well, then I suppose he gets the arrow in his chest. No, the sergeant still gets the arrow. What? <laughs> See, the officer's always played by a famous star. Oh. You can't have someone like Errol Flynn dying right at the beginning, can you? No, I suppose not, no. No, it's always the sergeant who's the first one to get it. Right in the chest. Bang, dead. <laughs> yes, all right, all right, all right, Frank, all right, all right. I've got it now. That'll do. You know, I just can't understand what's happened to Mr. Mannering and the rest of the platoon. Do you think Mr. Mannering and the others are all right? Oh, to be quiet, Frank, please. I'm trying to think. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uncle Arthur. What? <laughs> if anything happens to Mr. Mannering, will they make you the manager? <laughs> well, I don't know. I really haven't thought about that. I, um, well, yes. <laughs> <There's me. laughs> See, if they make you the manager... Perhaps they'll make me the chief clerk. How long have we been here? Nearly two hours. Well, I can't wait any longer, for Captain Mannering. We shall just have to carry out the battle plan without him. Well, all by ourselves? Yes, Frank, yes. Now come with me. Well, where are we going, Uncle Arthur? Well, you and I are going to establish a second command post at Godfrey's Cottage. All right? Yes. <laughs> well, I, I don't like it, Captain Mannering. It's too quiet. <laughs> Neither do I, Fraser. Can you see anything? Not a thing. It's getting quite dark. <laughs> do try and keep that parrot quiet, Miss Godfrey. I am so sorry, Mr. Manley. He belonged to our father, you know. It was he who taught Percy to speak. Really? Percy. Say, here comes the vicar. Let's say our prayers. <laughs> Take off your knickers, get up them stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wasn't that lovely, Mr. Mannering? Oh, yes. Charming. <laughs> First, it was the only thing our father left, Charles and me. All his money went to a girl in the village. 
We could never understand why. <laughs> I love nipping a crumpet. <laughs> oh, no, Percy, no. You're not having anything else. You've had your tea. Permission to speak, sir. Yes, what is it, Joan? I think I need to go somewhere. I think it's the excitement. Very well. Coffee? Uh, yes, Captain Mannering? You've got a lavatory? Well, uh, not inside, Mr. Mannering. We did think about having one once, but it meant losing the larder. Oh, yes, it was. <laughs> Where is it? It's uh, outside, in the garden. I see. Come on, Jones, I'll come to the door and cover you. It's very nice of you, Mr. Mannering, but I think I'd rather go out to the toilet. <laughs> Well, come on, Frank. Do try and keep up. I'm sorry, Uncle Arthur. I've got a stone in my boot. I say, look, look. This is Godfrey's cottage. Now, come on. We'll go into the garden. And keep behind these bushes. All right, Uncle Arthur. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry, Uncle Arthur. It's my hay fever. Yes, well, just try and control it. I'll try. It's been in this garden. <laughs> I don't think there's anyone at home, is it? <laughs> It's all in darkness. Well, I expect Mr. Godfrey's sister's gone to bed. So go round to the front, Uncle Arthur, and get the key from under the floor. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't like the look of this. It's too quiet. <laughs> hey, look, Uncle Arthur. What? But where? There's a German soldier coming to that hut thing. Look, look at his helmet. <laughs> oh, Joe, you're right. Quick, now, come on. Take aim. Right, fire. <laughs> Mr. Manrin, let me in. Oh, I've been fired at. Whoa. Quick, inside, Jones. Oh. Keep down, everybody. Fraser, cock the Lewis gun. Aye, sir. Shall I fire? No. Oh. Wait a minute. Right. I'm not sure where those shots came from. Permission to speak, sir. Yes, Jones. I think they came from another gun. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jones. <laughs> Seem to come from the summer house, sir. Right. You got the range, Fraser? Aye, sir. Right, Fraser. Stand by the fire. Aye, sir. Uncle Arthur. Mm -hmm. Do you think we got that German? I don't know. It's awfully quiet. <laughs> You're right, Frank. Frank! Frank, what's the matter? I think I'm going to start sneezing again. <laughs> Charles, dear. Yes, Sissy, what is it? I don't want to interrupt you all when you're all having such fun. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Do you think Mr. Mannering would mind if I carried on clearing the table? Oh, I think that would be all right, to say, but do be careful. Oh, don't worry, Charles. I'm getting quite used to the dark now. Uh, I won't disturb your friend with the gun. I'll shake the cloth out of the kitchen window. Yes, sir. Oh, all right, oh, my dear. <laughs> Wish to speak, Mr. Mannering. What is it, John? Do you think we got them, sir? I don't know. Wish I knew what was going on out there. What do you think we ought to do now, Uncle Arthur? Well, you can stop calling me Uncle Arthur for a start. I'm sorry, Sergeant Wilson. Yes, all right. No, no, no! Stop sneezing. I can't help it. Hey, look. Look, they're waving a big white flag out the window. Do you think they're surrendering? Well, I suppose they must be. Well, what happens now? Well, one of us ought to go and accept it. Well, you're the oldest, Uncle. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> Sergeant. You'd better go. All right. No, no, all right, all right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll both go. Really, Frank, for heaven's sake. Haven't you seen that poster? Coughs and sneezes spread diseases. I mean, use your handkerchief properly. Don't just, just wave it about. <laughs> Mr. Mannering, sir. What is it, Fraser? They're surrendering. They're waving up in a white cloth. Look. Well, that's it then, isn't it? Well done, man. We showed them. Mind you, they might be up to some dastardly Nazi trick. I'll make them come right into the room. Fraser, you keep them covered. Oh, well, that's right. I'll try shouting at them. Come and see here. <laughs> You'd better put the lights on so that we can take a look at them. I'd like to volunteer to put the lights on, sir. Yes, all right, Jim. Excuse me, Mr. Manning. What is it now? The lights are on. I can see that. <laughs> that was a short night. That was a short night. <laughs> Shut that bird up, somebody. <laughs> Now, uh, Yes, Mr. Manning? When I tell you, I want you to open the door very quickly. Uh, I'll do my best, Mr. Manning. All right. Come in and see here with your hands up. Now, Godfrey. Good heavens. Wilson, Mr. Manning, what are you playing at? You might have killed us. You might have killed us. We thought you were Germans. Oh, we thought you were the Germans. 
I'm disappointed in you, Wilson. <laughs> you surrendered. You should have fought for the last man. We might have killed you, Mr. Manry. That's beside the point. I... <laughs> You've no right to give in. Well, we didn't give in. You gave in first. You waved the white flag. Oh, no, we didn't. Oh, yes, you Look, did. just a moment, just a moment. Who's in charge here? I am. Oh, it's you. I might have guessed. Well, I'm going to get you good and proper this time. What do you mean? There's lights screaming all over the road. What's the idea, eh? Good job I was passing on my way home. What are you going home for? There's an invasion on them. What are you talking about? The church bells, of course. Well, that was a false alarm. We've been stood down for ages. Right, I'm going to book you all for flagrant disregard of blackout regulations. What do you say to that? <laughs> Take off your knickers. Get up them stairs. <laughs> In that episode of Dad's Army from the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessure as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lorry, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, ARP Warden, Nan Braunton, Sissy Godfrey, and Percy Edwards as Percy the Parrot. The Battle of Godfrey's Cottage was adapted for radio by Harold Snowd and Michael Knowles and produced by John Dykes. <laughs>